Last week, this channel exclusively leaked the cancelled Navi 4C design that demonstrated just how ambitious AMD was planning to get with RDNA 4. And by now, we actually also have renders from fans on Twitter of what this could have roughly looked like in the flesh, or, uh, silicon, I guess. And yeah, I mean, it looks really cool, and there's just no way around it. You realize this the second you look at that thing. AMD wasn't just planning to do a simple update. And in fact, whether you look at what I was told by AMD engineers months ago or very recently in content, it's clear that big RDNA 4 was taking a lot of effort to complete. And well, that effort wasn't cheap to fund. But you know, I am sure many of you still have a lot of questions about what happened and what is still happening with RDNA 4. I know I do, and so this week, while unpacking at the new house and introducing my dog to my girlfriend's cat, I continue to simultaneously reach out to additional sources and ask follow-up questions and just, well, think about what had been leaked so far. And actually, one thing that I couldn't help but think about over time is how odd it was that AMD didn't just iterate on RDNA 3 with a more conservative upgrade with RDNA 4 next year. I mean, think about it. TSMC 3 nanometer, which I am told will be ready next year, totally fine, allows for a 70% density increase on logic. This Navi 31 design that we've already seen released, I would argue is just begging to have its graphics die, die shrunk, and then get some RDNA 4 upgrades, and then keep those MCDs on 6 nanometer, but updated to support GDDR7. I mean, I thought that was the whole point of that RDNA 3 design. It wasn't perfect at first, but the next one, well, they can just like Zen 2 to Zen 3, bring in some architectural updates and maybe die shrink it, and boom, all of those headaches and early design work they put into making this multi-chip multi-node type design would pay off when nvidia has to keep shrinking everything monolithically to a smaller more expensive node and indeed i reached out to a few sources this week and asked was that considered is there maybe we're we're missing it is there some other design team that is working on a more conservative upgrade with rdna3 to rdna4 for the flagship and all amd canceled was the crazy pie in the sky option and if i put these quotes on screen i'm basically told that no that is not a thing one source of mine tells me that as far as they are aware that navi 4c design that i leaked is the singular, the big RDNA 4 configuration. And while an alternative design that's essentially just Navi 31, but with Navi with RDNA 4 upgrades and GDDR7 could have been possible, it was never a project to this person's knowledge. And therefore, it, never, it didn't exist. It still doesn't exist. And if AMD last minute wanted to make this, it would take too long to get out to be competitive. And this was backed up by another source that tells me that any Navi 31 version of RDNA 4 would require a whole new tape out. And if they had any issues with it whatsoever, the program would balloon in cost quickly and likely get pushed out to 2025. And at that point, RDNA 5 would be coming and it just wouldn't be worth it. The elaborate design that was leaked, that was their only flagship design and it's been canceled. Now, a third source that I didn't actually consult or should I say, we didn't get a chance to connect for the previous leak I put out this week, actually sent me some interesting uh, perspectives. This person said that after watching the latest Broken Silicon with that 8900 XTX leak, they wanted to clarify that, well, it's true that Navi 4C's design is quite elaborate and therefore requires a lot of design work, which costs money. It never would have gotten that far in development if they didn't think they would for sure get it working. You see, Navi 4C was the chosen Halo design for a reason. Well, years ago, perhaps they considered a more conservative option. None of those made it far, and that's for a reason. They thought they could do this, and they thought it would be very powerful. However, the one thing they're never sure of is once you hit the ground running, if it's still going to be worth the money as a market changes. And the market is changing right now. Gamers don't want $2,000 graphics cards. It's obvious. Gamers want existing flagship performance to become reasonably priced 
Finally, no one's taking those COVID BS prices anymore. And so AMD, the more likely explanation is perhaps the design ended up costing more than they thought it would to keep the development going. Maybe more issues popped up than they had expected or they were worried they could pop up in final tapeouts. But at the end of the day, they do think they could have gotten it working. They just don't think it's the right product for this market right now. But it might be the right product to be used with RDNA 5. And actually, I want to drill down here for a second because there are some important implications from these recent quotes I've gotten from sources that I think people might miss that actually have a pretty positive set of connotations behind them. Uh, number one, what I'm seeing here is that AMD is, they actually are confident they can get that crazy concept I leaked to work. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when they decide to green light this product. And you have to remember, in that recent RDNA 4 isn't canceled leak I put out, I distinctly said that there's still a slim chance AMD might still launch Navi 4C. Now, that decision will have to be made in the next month or two from what I hear, but it's not a matter of, oh, we can't get it working. It's a matter of, can they prove they can do it within budget and that it won't have more issues pop up in the final road to development? It's about potential future issues, not mega showstoppers right now. And that's an important distinction that I don't think was properly expressed before. And that is good news. Furthermore, this also suggests that they are extra sure they can make something like this in the future whenever they are ready to. Again, like I said, it's a matter of when, not if. And well, right now, they have limited resources. They are in a tech market that is in a bit of a recession, and they have to worry about MI300, MI400. And I just think there is a good chance that they think, look, this crazy, elaborate, expensive design, maybe it would have increased performance over RDNA 3 by, I don't know, two to three times. I'm not saying it would have, but let's say it would have. Two to three times the performance. If that would have cost $2,000, maybe even more, maybe AMD is going, huh, it seems like we have to sell the 7900 XTX for about 900 or less for it to sell incredibly well for the rest of this generation. It sold well at $1,000 over the holiday season in 2022, but that was the holiday season. So yeah, if it takes $900 for that level of performance, and right now we're working on something that's two to three times the performance, but will cost two to three times as much, eh, that might not be the right move. Not right now. But if the overall concept, if the overall organization of those chiplets is sound, maybe they're looking at RDNA 5 and going, RDNA 5 looks pretty promising. That one's going to have an even better architecture. And if we just use RDNA 5 architectures with this chiplet organization, maybe we can get to something four to five times what we have now and still make it only cost three times as much. It's still only going to be for rich gamers besides the cut down versions, but at least it might be something that if this market starts taking off again and booming well in a year or two, maybe some people will go, yeah, I will pay two times as much as the 7900 XDX for four to five times the performance. But no, even if it came out a year or two sooner, I, I wouldn't have paid two times as much for two times as much performance, if that makes sense. And of course, the final implication of these quotes is that, well, if they don't think Navi 41 or 42 are right for the market right now, well, they haven't canceled the other ones. And that means they think those ones are going to offer something this market really likes. Or let's be honest, they would have canceled those too. And well, I reached out to additional sources about the RDNA 4 cards that AMD hasn't canceled right now. And I want to get to the performance you should expect out of them and how they're probably overall going to be positioned. But first, an ad from a sponsor. This piece of content is brought to you by AliExpress. AliExpress is a feather everyone should have in their online shopping cap for finding competitive pricing on clothing, electronics, and do-it-yourself computer parts like this RX 6400 right here. On their website, they have one of, if not the cheapest, low-profile versions of the RX 6400 I can find on the market right now, and they were nice enough to send it to me for this ad. It will act as a backup card for Dan to ensure he always has spare parts in case anything ever goes wrong with his desktop. You gotta keep that 
content coming no matter what, people. You know, I actually played around with it for a while, and I found that at low settings I could play every game, including Battlefield 2042 128-player multiplayer and 1080p60, just fine. It's nothing fancy, but it's a good low-profile, no PCIe power-required backup card for Dan that could still run all of his games and apps if he needed to. So, to get products like this and to support the channel when you do, use offer code all on AE to get up to $20 off your orders during their 828 sale. Again, clicking on this link in the description and using that discount code really helps the channel a lot and it saves you money. Check out AliExpress today. All right, now before I get to the quotes of what I'm hearing about RDNA 4 performance, including some early suggestions of what the specs could be, I actually want to get an important point out of the way. And that point is that I think a lot of people that I'm seeing discussing RDNA 4 online right now may be fundamentally underestimating how powerful even a mid-sized monolithic card could be from RDNA 4 on TSMC's 3 nanometer or really even 4 nanometer nodes. After all, let's remember that despite the RX 7600, which is the most recent monolithic card AMD's released, using a grossly inferior node to NVIDIA's RTX 4060, it still manages to match it in rasterization performance. And it's only 28% bigger. Again, a card is competing from AMD with an NVIDIA counterpart and it's not that much larger, and yet it uses a far worse node. I mean, if RDNA 4 fixes the power consumption and clock speed issues that have been widely reported to have happened with RDNA 3, and then they gets a massive node improvement, it wouldn't need that big of a die to impress people, I think. And unlike Lovelace, RDNA 4 will actually have access to GDDR7 for the lineup, which will bring even further power savings and performance improvements over what NVIDIA can offer right now with their current early 4 nanometer lineup with Lovelace. So anyways, with that in mind, let me put some quotes about RDNA 4 performance on screen. This first source here is someone that I've been talking to for years, and this person tells me that both of the remaining RDNA 4 configurations being finalized are monolithic and described as mid-range. I was also told to remember that these mid-range GPUs are meant to remain competitive well into 2025. You know, this isn't a mid-range card releasing now. This is a mid-range card releasing a year from now meant to compete with NVIDIA cards coming out through 2025. So it's going to be a lot stronger than what you can get right now in the mid-range. And a second source here, one of my best sources, told me that it is too early to double down on exact performance yet and that a big part of that is there could be some last-minute tweaks to some of the aspects of the final hard design that they haven't been fully defined yet but that they're close and either way they are both meant to compete in the mid-range a year from now and then a third source told me that they actually got pretty lucky and caught part of a presentation a bit ago that proposed 64 compute units for Navi 43 and 32 compute units for Navi 44 but the person didn't catch the note or bus width and Please listen to me when I say this. I am not confirming the compute unit count for Navi 43 or Navi 44 yet. And keep in mind, I just said, source number one and two in red text, two of my best sources say that they have not been fully defined yet. But what I can say is that there was a recent presentation given proposing 64 compute units for Navi 43. So that should hopefully give everybody here an idea of the ballpark of performance AMD is targeting with these products but whether or not that is the compute unit counts amd goes with for navi 43 and 44 i think they are interesting numbers to highlight for a thought experiment because i want everybody to think about this right now navi 32 which is about to launch very soon to the mid-range that configuration has up to 60 compute units all right so it's pretty comparable to what i'm hearing navi 43 could be at this stage right so that's a 200 millimeter squared GCD and Navi 32, with a similar amount of compute units. 
shrink that down to three nanometer, which has a 70% density gain for the logic. All right, so I let's not assume it's a perfect shrink, but that would still probably make 60 compute units smaller than an RTX 4060. And then even if you threw on a 256-bit bus, I still think the overall die size would probably just be close to a 5700 XT. That's mid-range. And yet, taking Navi 32's compute unit count roughly and putting it from 5 nanometer to 3 nanometer and making it monolithic for latency reductions, yeah, that's easily going to beat the performance of Navi 32 if that is what Navi 43 ends up being. And I mean, heck, let's talk about Navi 44 for a second here. Everyone I've talked to today, because I did double check on this, says that everything, both Navi 43 and Navi 44, are being described as mid-range, which I don't know what AMD describes as mid-range, but I do think they try to say the 7600 is mid-range. And so, yeah, let's just say Navi 44 has 32 compute units then, which I'm not confirming, but let's just say it does, because it sounds like it could. That's the same compute unit count as the RX 7600. All right, so let's pretend that's just a double die shrink then, right? Let's say they're putting it on three nanometer, going from six nanometer in the 7600 to five to three nanometer. That's two no die shrinks. That much of a die shrink could take 7600 compute unit counts and make it the size of a 6500 XT's die, which means that it doesn't even need to be on three nanometer. If they even shrunk the 7600 to four nanometer and then gave it GDDR7, upgraded it to RDNA 4, I think you could get something that's probably the same die size as a 7600. And I don't know, it'd probably be about 30% better, maybe 50% once you factor in GDDR7, which Lovelace and current cards don't have access to. That could put it as a lower mid-range card that performs about like a 6800. And if that was 330 or less with 6500 XT power consumption, that'd be pretty dang good. But actually, what I just said wouldn't just be good. It would be what's logical. And I want to move on from what I've heard from some sources to what I think just makes sense, period. Right? So... If AMD was working on all of these chiplet designs for RDNA 3, which they are, and they're about to launch Navi 32, and then in the future, they were hoping to make some crazy elaborate and expensive Navi 41 and 42, I don't know why you'd make more than one monolithic design of RDNA 4 unless they were on different nodes, right? And think, and hear me out here on this. Like, Navi 43, we already know that AMD is going to make a big laptop push next year. I would recommend you watch that Strix Halo leak for me to understand just how many of these laptop focused products they're working on right now. It would make sense to have a three nanometer card that is meant for premium laptops and is monolithic to maximize efficiency. But then if you're going to make another die, it should probably be on four nanometer to be cheaper, kind of like a better version of what the RX 7600 was supposed to be. And on that note though, you know, it sounds like from the specs that have been suggested to me that one of them will be as strong as the current high end and one of them will probably at least beat the 3070 and be lower mid range. I actually think that level of performance is what these cards have to be to make sense to launch at all. And that is because we've had so much RDNA 2, so much Ampere, and to a certain extent, a lot of Lovelace even oversupply in a market that's now in a recession that if you're not beating those levels of performance, that is to say, you're not at least around a RX 7900 XT, so better than a 3090 Ti uh, in the mid-range, and you're not at least better than a 3070 for a really cheap price, there's no point in launching these cards. Those levels of performance, anything below those levels, have been royally saturated for years now, and there's still tons of cards out there. In fact, I want to take this part of the video to put out a small NVIDIA leak here in update on what I'm hearing about Ampere oversupply. And that is, I am told, and I'm not going to say who the source is, but I will say this is one of the top tier sources I've used for my supply, oversupply, and launch supply leaks. This person tells me that there are still around 6 million Ampere-based GA106 and GA104 dies sitting in inventory waiting to be sold, and that there's just no way around it 
the RTX 3060 Ti, 3060, and 3050 are going to continue to be the true entry-level cards for NVIDIA for years. NVIDIA has millions of 3050s, 3060s, and 3060 Ti's to sell through for a while now. And then consider the used market, and then consider that NVIDIA probably also overproduced Lovelace a bit, and AMD also has a lot of RDNA 2 cards, certainly on the used market as well. And yeah, there's just no point. There's no point for, I would argue, either NVIDIA or AMD to launch any cards weaker than like a 3090 or something, unless it's dirt cheaper, like Navi 44 might be for the level of performance it offers at all. There, there's just no point. And that is also why, in addition to what I've heard from my sources today, logically, I think Navi 43 and 44 kind of have to be that level of performance to make any sense at all. And actually, talking about these levels of performance and die sizes, that is to say, we're talking about 4 nanometer and 3 nanometer monolithic products that are between probably, I don't know, 150 to 400 millimeters squared. These really do sound a lot like laptop cards to me. And honestly, that makes a lot of sense. AMD is going to focus heavily on laptop next year. And... I, I just have this feeling that they looked around at what their priorities are going to be in 2024 when they were deciding if they should cancel Navi 4C. And they said, wait, let's get this straight. We're launching Zen 5 Epic and variants on both 3 and 4 nanometer, by the way. We're going to launch Zen 4 Threadripper. We're going to launch a handful, not just one or two, a handful of new APUs. We're going to launch Zen 5 to desktop and we're possibly even going to launch a new APU for a PlayStation, why would we be pouring money into some elaborate $2,000 card that just seems like a waste of money? Especially, I didn't even mention MI400 yet. And so why would they cancel 4C, but not 43 and 44? Because next year, a big push for AMD is going to be laptops. And these cards are going to be perfect for both high-end and mid-range laptops. And that just further, in my opinion, cements why these decisions were made and uh, why they are probably targeting the exact configurations that I'm hearing they are. Oh, and one more thing about AMD laptop products next year. So I have been talking on and off about Strix Halo for months now, and I've always communicated that I hear that Strix Point could be ready at the beginning of next year, certainly by quarter two, but that it seems like Strix Halo is slipping into the later portion of the year and I actually have more context, and it's good news as to why that might be happening. So one of my best sources actually followed up with me this week and said that Strix Halo is being pushed back to late 2024 for no reason having to do with design issues, nor with any of the TMSMC nodes involved. After all, Strix Point also utilizes a cutting-edge TSMC 4 nanometer node in the same Zen 5 and RDNA 3.5 architectures as Strix Halo, but that one's not being de delayed. And that's because it drops into a lot of existing laptop designs currently, and it's also not as crazy to design around. Strix Halo is a radical mega APU that is requiring many OEMs to put real effort into entirely new chassis and boards to be paired with it, and that means a lot of work and time is needed to do it properly, AMD doesn't want OEMs to release any Strix Halo products before they are fully ready and actually built to utilize Strix Halo in a good way that isn't just an afterthought. And this is all very good news. Strix Point is launching first half of next year. It has already an A3.5. It has Zen 5, uses a TSMC 4 nanometer node. None of those things are issues. The only issue with Strix Halo is it's just a new type of product that needs to align with OEM laptop release cadences. Usually, there's some new laptop releases early in the year, but then there are also some pretty radical new designs that come out for back to school, and that's the cadence AMD is targeting so that OEMs actually have time to properly build new types of laptops around this rather ambitious new APU they're launching. And so, yeah, that's to say that just because an RDNA 3.5 product is coming out late next year doesn't mean an RDNA 4 product couldn't come out at a similar point in time because there already have been 3.5 products out for at least half a year. And uh, yeah, that is going to do it for this video. I hope you 
uh, forgive the haphazardly put together uh, setup with Jesse sleeping on the ground over there. Um, this is, of course, a work in progress, and I've moved to a new house, but you will see a lot of little updates going on around here. You can already see that I've put some thought into how I'm going to handle lighting in the new studio. It should be very cool when done. This isn't even half of what it's going to look like. And uh, just remember, if you want to see how this studio progresses and all of the other content that I will be putting out in leaks over the next few weeks and months, be sure that you subscribe to the Moore's Law is Dead YouTube channel and ring the bell button so you don't miss that upcoming content. And also consider supporting us on Patreon. The next guest on Broken Silicon will be High Yield. The, he's done a ton of videos looking at why NVIDIA may or may not go monolithic and what AMD is doing with their recent releases and more. You can ask him questions, ask me questions for that episode if you join the Patreon now. Those are about to be dropped. And uh, you'll also get that episode early and ad-free if you support us on Patreon, too. In addition to Die Shrinks, new Die Shrink just came out. It's basically a bonus video. No ads are ever in these pieces of content. And, you know, we really can't do this without the stable income that Patreon allows us. So please consider supporting us on Patreon. But otherwise, no matter what, thank you for watching. <laughs>